Hey guys, today I'm going to use auto trace feature of Vectonator, the feature that is still missing in my favorite Affinity Designer. So today we are working in Vectonator. Good thing is it's totally free up both on desktop and iPad. I will be using the desktop version of the app, but the interface and all tools are exactly the same as the iPad version. So our task is to take a drawing, whatever it's just scan on paper or drawing from, let's say, Procreate, export that first to JPEG on or PNG, and then we're going to put it inside Vectonator and run Auto Trace to turn it into vector graphics. So let's get started. Here I am inside Vectonator. I already paste my raster drawing. I use square artboard in this case. I can zoom in and take a closer look. As you can see, it's pixel based. It's just a drawing. Something that you may export from your Procreate or when you're scanning your drawing. Using scanner, maybe taking a photo of your drawing, you will end up with pixel based image like this. And our task is to turn this into Vector. I'm going to duplicate this layer. So I got a copy of the original one and on this duplicate layer I will select image and then head to top right corner, Auto Trace. If you're on iPad, this will be just below the image. I hit Auto Trace and there are two options for me, Photography and Sketch. In our case, we go with the second one because it's black and white image. Click on that, wait a moment and here it is our vector version automatically without tracing this. So let's take a look and check the quality of this trace. Let me open this layer. All right, we got everything on separate layers now. That will be very handy for coloring. All right, let's zoom in. As you can see, now it's all vector. It's very sharp and I can scale it up and down as I want. This was the original one. Here's my vector original and vector. Okay. As you can see, we got multiple objects in this layer now. I can select them one by one. Let's start with the biggest one. As you can see, this is just on the top of the black one. It's not like white color with stroke. No, no, no. So I select this big white shape and on the right side of the screen, we got multiple panels. The panels we are searching for is called appearance. Inside this panel you can find fill and stroke option. We can change the fill color from white to let's say green. This is frog I guess. <laughs> let's go with the green. Use the slider. Don't use the second slider. The second slider is for opacity, not for light. Okay, so we just use the first slider and then we pick the color from this matrix. We can even add this to this palette so we can reuse this color easily. All right, it's how easy it is to recolor elements in vector elements because vector elements are shapes. So we can always change the color of the shape. This one got little white stroke. I just switch off. I don't need stroke for this one. I can select two elements same time holding shift. And again, search for fill color on the right side of your screen. Switch off the stroke. We don't need stroke. We just need fill color. I can start with the same color and then reduce the brightness like this. Cool. This element as well. Just click on it and change the fill color from white to our green. And it was really quick, very quick way to colorize your image using auto trace. All right. Here we got eyes as well. We don't need stroke. So I'm switching off the stroke every time I see it. I really don't know why they add stroke everywhere for us, but this is not something we need for this image. All right, using again fill on the right, modifying my fill color. And it's look all right already, but if you want, you can now zoom in really close like I just did. And we're going to clean up this trace. This is auto trace generated by computer. Let's select no tool. This is like the second cursor on the list. And no tool will not affect the whole image. It will affect only single nodes. Nodes are these building points of each shape. So we can click on the point. Take a look. I can click on one node using no tool 
and if this is unnecessary note I can hit delete on my keyboard and delete that and I got much smoother line. The problem with auto trace is we got more notes than we need usually so you can guess that you got too many notes there are some unnecessary notes like this one so let's use note tool and inspect this image and remove unnecessary notes like here take a look if I get rid of those notes this one and this one I got much smoother line here much nicer line I can also use the note to change the curve of the shape like this by pulling the control points we can transform this curvy node to the sharp one as well you can do that by clicking the icon at the very top of this panel on the right side take a look let's scroll up notes over here we can turn this note into sharp node by clicking the first icon now this is like sharp pointy now again this is curvy one now it's sharp so you can modify that if you need like pointy note sharp note you can turn your curvy note into one if you need curvy one you can turn your sharp note into curvy one so we do a little of inspection now by moving notes removing notes transforming sharp notes to curvy one the most popular thing <laughs> the most common thing sorry you will need to do after you auto trace is to get rid of unnecessary notes take a look if i remove notes the shapes are so much smoother so the computer did most of the work for us it's auto traced the whole image into vector so for our task now is to go around and just remove unnecessary notes smoothing up the whole shape let's get rid of this one this one this one take a look here is we got white shape at the top if i delete that i can see the black shape below so that's not good we need to use a geometry action boolean function to make a hole inside this black shape below this is black shape below and i need to use this white shape above to cut out the hole inside this black shape so I select both layers and then click subtract and now I got hole here this shape jump up on the list so I see the black shape now at the top but we can fix that by dragging this down here to the bottom so let's drag this black shape to the bottom and here we are so that's how we can fix that also something that happened because we use auto trace so the program didn't detect that they should be removed together with the background because it's like close shape all right so just inspecting with node tool i strongly recommend this step before you move forward with your auto trace image auto trace give us many options now now we can scale it up and down we can turn this drawing into icon logo we can put it on t-shirts so i think it's worth the time to inspect your edges with this little note tool it's not that hard just go around and remove unnecessary notes to make the whole image just a little bit better Take a look i just click option here on the panel called delete notes and this is not what i mean take a look i delete notes all around the image i simplify the whole image let's do it here delete notes i delete notes all around it's kind of handy feature but it's too powerful in our case we don't want to delete notes automatically all around so i'm going to undo this step and we're going to continue with manual so let's undo that it's too simplify now undo now i need to like keep adding notes if i want to continue from here take a look this is too simplify i got not enough notes so if you prefer adding notes instead of removing notes you can use that but i will go back to this undo with command z and just simply continue with removing notes and i found one more spot here that i need to take care of there's a black 
sorry white area here at the top of the black shape so we need to do the same trick once more we're going to select both shapes and then use subtract this is not transparent between his fingers this is just white so we need to take care of that as well all right just removing notes removing notes The general rule is it's better to have less than more <laughs> notes. It's easier to control your illustration with less notes. All right, let's get rid of this. As I mentioned, we select this shape and also the black one below. So we must select two shapes same time with holding shift. And now I use subtract in the path area. Perfect, we got a hole in the black shape. Let's drag the black shape again down below so we can see our illustration. All right, so here it is. I went around and tried to smooth up this auto trace image using no tool. So we got a little bit better result than the automatic one. I think there are still some areas that we can fix. You can scale it up and down to see in different sizes. Depends how you plan to use that. If you plan to use a small icon, scale it down and see that it's easy to recognize. Maybe you need to simplify your design. Okay, I think I still need to take care of this area. Using node tool again, we will move some nodes to make this, this shape more like curvy here, like elliptical, like this. So as you can see, this auto trace is great, but I do not recommend you to trust 100% into it. Just take the node tool and inspect all around, make some little fixes here and there. All right, this was the original pixel base image. This is the auto trace vector image. And now we are ready to export that as vector format. The most common vector format over the internet is called SVG, stands for scalable vector graphics. So you can use that later in other vector applications like Adobe Illustrator or my favorite Affinity Designer. So let's export our auto trace result to SVG. On the right side we got share button and you can select SVG. Alright guys, I hope this was helpful. I post two tutorials like this every week, so if you are into vector graphics, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye!